the question was is how could I have a page that had some text on it that was truncated and if I click on it I see the whole text well let's let's try to do that and we'll see maybe it will be a little bit different than what you had in mind but uh, maybe that would give you some ideas so I'm going to go in and make an HTML page So first of all, how can we truncate some text? We could do this a few different ways. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some Greek text in here. And we're going to look at what our options are to truncate the text. It actually is as my title sort of alludes to, there's an over, overflow property. So I'm going to go, I'm going to set the size of the paragraph to a certain size. This is the only paragraph, so I'm just going to use a P tag with 100 pixels height, 100 pixels, I'll give a background of yellow. So, if we do that, this is what we have. first day of class. I forgot my end style tag. So it thinks everything is my CSS. All right. So notice what happened. I made it 100 by 100 and it made the paragraph 100 by 100 but it overflowed it because it doesn't know what else to do. All right. It doesn't know what else to do with it. Let's actually make it a little wider and and Let's make a width of 700. <laughs> 400. Okay. So, it doesn't know what to do. Uh, it, it's not, by default, it's not going to cut off any content. So that paragraph is yellow. So we see where the border of the paragraph is. But yet it doesn't know what to do with this, so it displays it sort of outside the thing outside of the scope of the paragraph. So there's an overflow parameter that we can set to do several things. And one of the things that we could do is put a scroll bar on it. The default is visible, right? The default is it's not going to clip anything. We can make overflow 
on this guy, scroll. And if we did that, then we have a scroll bar to scroll through. All right. So that's one option that we would have in your case. But that didn't sound like what you wanted. You wanted to actually cut off that and put three dots there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the overflow to hidden. And I'm going to put in a span three dots. I just want to get the things next to each other. This isn't a necessary part of it. I just want, well, that doesn't look good. Shucks. Um, let me get rid of this. Actually, let me put this in a... Uh, I'll put it below it. You can style it however you wanted it to appear. There's more there. All right. So what I want to do is I want to make it so that if you click on it, more appears. So how do we do that? Well, that's interactivity, right? You do something the page responds. So that would be JavaScript. So I could say on click equals show more. I'm going to make a paragraph, uh, or um, I'm sorry, a function to show that paragraph. And I could do this a couple of different ways. One way I could do it is change some properties of it. One way we could do it is we could make it visible. So I make the overflow visible if they click on it. And that made it visible. Now we 
could then hide it again, right? And we could do that, and we could actually give this guy an ID. We could set the inner HTML of this to less And we can make it a little toggle thing that would say if if it currently says more, I'm going to make it visible and then change the inner HTML of that to less. Otherwise, we'll make it hidden. this works. If it says more, we click on it. It shows more. If we say less, we click on it and nothing happens. signs if you're doing a comparison. More. I have something wrong with that. If it is more and I click on it, I want to say, ah. I just have to be consistent with what I'm putting in there. So if it says more, I click on it, it shows it and says less. If I say less and I click on it, it goes more. Now again, I'm not 100% happy with it. Uh, I mean, you could, you know, you could make an ellipsis or whatever. You could change the styling of it and the appearance to make it. But that in a nutshell is how you could do it. You could also probably, if you prefer, play with the height attribute of this. And that might be a better, that might allow for different things. So instead of setting the overflow to visible, I could set the height to 400 px, let's say, and instead of making the overflow invisible, I could set the height back to 100 px. Once you, you know, once you realize that, you know, JavaScript is about changing the properties, either the style or the HTML properties, and it's just a matter of what property you want to change and what you want to trigger it, uh, what you want to start the ball in motion and to trigger it. So in this case, more, less, more. The 400 is a little big, but if I made it like 150 or whatever, it would probably be good enough. All right, 
any other questions? Does someone want to walk down the hall and see if the lab is available? And come back. Okay, cool. I'll keep the recording going just in case. Just in case. Uh, Just in case what? Just in case it's not available and I have to continue this lecture by, I don't know, either answering more questions or juggling or showing off some of my other talents. So for your sake, I hope the lab's available. Can I see the code for that? Yeah, and I'll, I will post it. Okay. All right, so let's go to lab and show off our stuff. I will post this to Canvas. Is the door open? Okay, cool. So I will post this to Canvas, and there we go.